Hi, welcome to your neighborhood pharmacy. Hi, I've got a prescription for diabetes test strips. How much is the copay? Well, it depends on your type of commercial insurance and factoring in your yearly spend, subtracting the deductibles, also depending on your monthly Ugh, allowance. Why can't there be a better option? Or you could try Contour Next test strips, a 35 counts only $19.99 over the counter and proven to be highly accurate. Go to contournext.com slash radio to see if over the counter strips are a more affordable option for you. Hmm, I think I'll try Contour Next. Okay. Hi, welcome yeah, to Ghostman yeah. Radio Station. And my guest tonight is Gary Smith, who is not only a author, but a well-known, well, I would say, famous photographer. And he uses his photography to create his poetry. I think it's a very fascinating insight at how he does this, and he's going to tell us how he goes about it. So, Gary, explain the theory behind your photography that helps you write the poetry. Well, uh, years ago, I was accepted uh, to study with some of the great photographers. Uh, the greatest in, in, in my year was Ansel Adams. And he, he said that if, if you go out and there's this gorgeous, beautiful sunrise or sunset over the ocean, and you set up your camera and you capture that, and you, and you go back and, you've, um, and you develop it, and there it is, just as you saw it. Uh, all you've really done was to capture God's work. But if you shoot that photograph in black and white, only available to you uh, 11, 12 shades of gray, from white, pure white to pure black, and you manipulate that around to when anybody looks at that photograph, they feel the warmth of the sun, and they, they feel that sunrise as the way you've seen it. He says, that's my work, not God's work. And so that's pretty much how my photography has, has, has had developed from that point on, where what I'm really looking to do is gather the elements in a scene that I can, I can put into a photograph to bring back a feeling I was feeling at the time I've taken that photograph. And generally now it'll be... Uh, I'll no sooner get back to the car or whatever, and inspired by the photograph, I'll, I'll uh, write a line or two of poetry that explains my feelings at the time that I took that photograph. So, I see I that, that you've, uh, um, in your life, you've had a varied life. Um, you've been to war, which is never a nice thing, and obviously at the moment it's a connection with ukraine which i call a war i mean some people the debate is not a war but it's a war in my in name only yeah whenever you load a gun and shoot at somebody it's a war yeah it gets real personal yeah and i like the fact that you cover the fact that you as we all are growing old and profound loss which we all have a profound loss and we all experience it in a different way and i think we judge sometimes by the way we grieve do you agree with that? Well, I think about I think about my son that I lost every day, uh, but I don't think that's so much grieving. The grieving was all done within a couple of days of his loss, and it was it was I was fortunate. I got to hold him in my arms. He, he was born prematurely; he only lived a few hours, and I got to hold him in my arms as he passed. And in them two hours, we met each other. We, our, our souls at some level, I know people think I'm crazy when I say that, but they, it met. And he gave to me, uh, a vision of, of heaven and, and a future. I used to always wonder what would people look like in heaven? Would they be young like when you knew them or did they, they age or whatever? And no, it would be that. For me now, I understand it's that pure essence. I mean, we had we had a connection and a communication over those two hours as he passed, and it helped me uh, get through the grieving process and to make some decisions that 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 I had to make at that time. And one was probably the biggest was that I was not going to allow any failures in my life at that time to be associated to his death. That he he would have to carry that. Uh, through eternity, you know, 
while Gary had a great business, but it failed after the death of his son, or there was, a, you know, the divorce come because of the death of his son. Or no, not he wasn't going to be the excuse for any failures that I might have incurred. In the, and consequently, as years went by, I, I feel most of my successes have been because of the gift he gave me that day. So, so yeah, the grieving process at the time was short, but um, uh, I do think of him every day. And I think that's that's what we all do. I think every time, my theory is as long as you remember someone, they're technically still there with you in your head. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I like, I had a look at your book briefly, well, one of your books, you've got quite different collections of books, but I, I like the fact that you have got these different collections of books, because you've gone from romance to, I would say, what would you say, like semi kind of thriller come horror kind of books, or? Well, the, the, the first five books, or the first six books, now um, were uh, a mystery romantic series. Each is kind of tied to the other, although each book stands alone separately. And uh, it's uh, it's uh, they're about a, an aging writer who, an aging person who lost his life, his wife due to a car wreck, and had found family in, in Italy and came to learn. Uh, Italian and falls in love with a woman that ends up he, running from the FBI and Homeland Security and he has to help get her out of the country and uh, the second book is uh, it, basically him wanting to keep a connection to her she was married and at the end of the first book he, he wasn't he wasn't going to interfere with any kind of a family or child wearing she had some young children so he goes back to Italy to live and as a way to mentally keep a connection he he, he starts writing about uh, his experiences with her and getting her out of the country getting her out of Italy as a way of keeping her memory alive well his editor sees that it becomes a bestseller it turns into a movie and the next thing he knows he's he's a, he's Everybody thinks of him as a writer, and he really isn't. And in that book, he gets drugged into another experience and his connection with her. She's divorced now. It's been three years. They get together. And so the series of books progresses through the ups and downs of their relationship and, and murders and, and a lot of intrigue that, that involves. He gets drugged into these different situations as an aging writer. And at one point, I decided... I wanted to branch away from that. I mean, you're writing a series, most of the characters are reoccurring each, and it gets to not be much of a challenge. So I thought I would uh, step away from that and do a uh, collection of short stories. So this last book it got national recognition and awards in, in the United States, and it's a collection of 24 short stories and photographs and those poems of mine at the end. And that was a bit of a challenge, you know, to, to sit down because every between 1000 words written or 8,000 words, you're starting a new story, a new plot, new people, new characters, new idea. And, and so I found that creatively being very, very challenging, but I was very surprised with the, Reception it has re has received. Well, I also you run a, a, a thriving business as well, and you mix with business people and artistic people. I, I mean, I don't think there's much difference apart from dress sense, and probably <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Well, the, the business I, I, I the business I walked away from and uh, retired. Uh, about 12 years ago, uh, like the character in my first book, uh, I come to Europe uh, searching for a small village in Italy, not knowing what I would find, but uh, ended up finding a little village of 188 people that uh, 
where my grandfather was from and my great great grandfather's mill is still here uh most of the people in this little town of 188 people are cousins and so now i reside uh, i went back and uh, retired from the business and um, now i live uh, about seven months a year six months a year in in italy and the other six at home in america do you do you ever ponder about your military career sometimes about the um, i don't like how to express it that sometimes when you went into a situation obviously because of orders but does sometimes did you question the orders thinking well, am i in the right place at the right time well, I think we all—I—I I, I think we all do through the course of our lives. And uh, I was born with a very bad speech impediment uh, as a child, um, and I had to deal with that. And then I had what nobody in the day, in the day would call knew what it was, but uh, dyslexia. So, <laughs> of all things, uh, uh, writing was was hard for me. Spelling was terrible for me. Uh, tough time reading and and so I was supposed to be the first in our family to go to college and I started working in construction my junior sophomore year in high school and, and just fell in love with it and with the construction and come back told my parents I'm dropping all my college prep classes and I'm going to graduate and go off and just start living life and so sure sometimes during the course of the that you wonder what's making these why did you make these decisions? And and then I was reading about Winston Churchill of all people, and, and there was that line when he was uh, elected to Parliament at the uh, at the beginning of uh, World War II when uh, they actually they kind of put him in place because they were thinking they were going to capitulate to the Nazis or the Germans, and he, they'd make him the fall guy, as I kind of remember it, and. Uh, up to that point, he had kind of a career of failure and different things, and his dark black moods were legendary. And uh, so he, he's being driven home after elected to Parliament, as I remember reading the story. And and uh, his driver says, you seem to be in a very dark mood today, sir. And he was, because he figured England was going to have to surrender and he'd have to be the fall guy during that process and the next morning he picks him up and he's and he's in a brighter mood and he's uh, he says you seem to be fine today sir winston and he says yes he says uh, i spent the night thinking through all the tr my tumultuous life and and finally i know what it's about what it was all about and uh and it was to prepare me for one thing and the driver asked him, what's that one thing? He says, it's to save England. And so I think sometimes you got to wait a long time. You get towards the end, end of your life and you can look back and, and decisions and avenues you've taken didn't seem to make any sense. And it was life preparing you for, for one thing. And I guess for me, it was to be a writer. And I'm finally starting to realize that. I think that's that's strange. I always think it's strange how you get inspiration from, because I, 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 well, when I did write, I'd be like, I'd get up at like two o'clock in the morning and go, oh, good idea to write. And suddenly I'd be going, da, 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 writing like mad. And another day you'd be going, A, uh, for, no, I can't go on today. There's nothing coming. Do you ever get like a block sometimes or? I, I I was asked that question yesterday in an interview, and I I so far I've been lucky. I have never had a uh, uh, a writer's block, and um, I think that's because I never try to think through any of the books. I, I the commitment is to sit down and write every day, and uh, and and I don't know where it's going. And one of the comments I've gotten over and over again from some of my readers is that they they enjoy that they can't tell where the book is headed from chapter to chapter <laughs> and I, I had to laugh to myself and it's because the author didn't know where it was going 
I mean, there's, uh, I'll sit down and just start with a scene. It can be any scene. It can be the room I'm sitting in. And um, I don't need no inspiration. I'll just start describing the room and what's, what's, what's happening around me. And the, the, the clock is bug- bugging me because it's too loud. And that just kind of moves into all of a sudden there's a, maybe a knock on the door. And you open the door and you get shot dead. And then it takes cut off, you know. And it just kind of comes. And unplanned so um every time i sit down to write uh because i've written that last scene or whatever i kind of think i know where it's going to go but i'll sit down and my characters decide no we're not going to do that we're going to head off to france or we're going to head back to america or and and i just go with it i just by about the fourth or fifth chapter i'm really kind of excited every day to see where they where they're headed and i i kind of just Kind of like I'm observing a TV program, I and mean, I'm just writing down and copying their dialogue and where they're what they're doing. So I've been fortunate that way. I I I, uh, I could never write like a column for a newspaper every day. My hats off to those people with the deadlines or with uh, have to come up with something. It was tough enough with the short stories. I I I, I wouldn't be able to think that often, you know, on a, on a subject, you know, be given a subject to go cover or to write or a column about different things. It would be very difficult for me. I, I imagine you get lots of inspiration from the countryside that you're near because you've got some beautiful countryside over in Italy. There's some very vast regions. Yeah, I, uh, I've been fortunate that like when I was in business, I traveled an awful lot everywhere, all over. We the business grew to be uh, a, a national business in 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 America, and America is a very big country and with pockets of different cultures and stuff. And so it uh, it doesn't so much inspire me. The inspiration comes generally from something that's happened in my life. And then, you know, I'll start, I'll start wanting to read that or the first book was, uh, uh, the willing. And, uh, it was, uh, it's about, you know, like I said, uh, uh, an aging gentleman who, uh, lost his wife and, but the underlying theme to the whole book, uh, at the time was in Florence studying Italian and, and the whole theme was, uh, courtly love. Uh, how I, I was reading some stuff about the Renaissance and how they had rules around courtship that uh, they realized the person you married for political reasons if you were noble you married for uh, for for other reasons to have children to help in the fields I mean if you're a peasant and nobody married for love but yet they knew at some point you would run across your true love and so so that was that was the inspiration around that book. He, he falls in love with this woman who's married, and, and and she falls in love with him. But it's it ends up being a courtly kind of love. They, they don't act on it at all as they're trying to uh, escape uh, these murderers. And um, and so each book has has generally the inspiration around it has to do with uh, something I've been thinking about. <laughs> You know, something I'd read and stuff, not so much scenery. And uh, the, the scenery and stuff, it's more the, more the, inspires the photography more than anything. What would you do if someone like Netflix and Amazon came knocking your door and said, Gary, we'd like to take, make a version of your book. Obviously, they're not going to make the full version of the book. They're going to take bits and pieces of what they know will work on television. Would you be happy with that? Or would you like to be? Well, I think, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I've been asked that question, you know, you know, how much control, and, hey, you know, I, I've written the book. It's, uh, if, if they, I think it's a goal of most writers, you want your work seen, and if Netflix manipulated it some way to where millions of people we're interested in bought more books because I all my books I have I have a point of view about life and 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 something in them and uh, it's funny you raise that question because I've been asked that because this 
the the six books run like a series. Uh, my, the fans of my book love it and say, and, and, and say it should be a new series on Netflix. And, you know that uh, you know because it's the same strong character, it's a different story. Uh, so you, there's like maybe a season or two already written, and they think that. Uh, and I tell them, yeah, well, of course you'd love to see that happen. It would be uh, a sense of fulfillment uh, of achievement. But you know, there's uh, writing's a job, and uh, I don't know what amount of money they would give me, but it would be for ten years' work, and you divide that by ten years, and it's no, it would be no way to really make a living. <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the writing you got to better keep your day job because then you don't, you know, even a best-selling book, you, you can make it maybe quite a bit of money, but then it might be another 10 years before another payday. So, so, you know, wouldn't be all excited about the money gainer, but it would be nice to see something. It'd be a crowning achievement to 10 years of writing to see one of the books become a movie or the series become a, a, a Netflix series. It, it would be a it would be a sense of fulfillment that you've achieved the goal. You know, kind of like finishing your first marathon. <laughs> no one's going to put you on Wheaties, but there's a sense of such fulfillment that you you ran the 26 miles. You know, it's a very personal thing. I like on your website that you've got a selection of short stories that you can download or poems that you can read, and I like the one where it says no remorse. I like the. I'm reading just the premises of the first start of the story, so I haven't got deep into it yet. But I like the bit about when it says someone was hunting in her territory. She'd been so careful yeah. with her hunting, sure to never have more than two a year in the con- con- county. I thought, ah, oh, that sounds very intriguing. It's got my sparked my horror because I'm a big fan of horror, obviously, and it sparked my well, I, I, interest already. Yeah, that's short. That short story ends up being the third book in the series of the Warren Stillgrave series. Uh, uh, that short story, I wrote the short story and an agent had seen it and wanted to see the first four chapters of it as a novel. So in the book, uh, that gets added to uh, into a full novel. And it's an interesting philosophy for... Uh, Many years, I, I, I used to wonder, what would happen if in a small town, a serial killer come to town and started dating the local serial killer? Neither one of them knew they were serial, 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 serial killers, and yet they're, they're dating each other. And so uh, that's kind of how that short story come about. And the book, it's... The, the book's entitled The Undomesticated. And it's her theory and philosophy that we all kill to sustain life. We accept that. If we eat beef, even if you're vegetarian, you're, you're killing a plant before its normal cycle. And you're picking its fruit at their prime. And uh, so something dies to sustain our life, and we, we all kind of accept that. But she says, she's, it comes from the philosophy of, uh, of a philosopher, I think it's Don Luis, in his book, The Four Agreements. He mentions that we're never truly happy unless we're undomesticated. From the time we're born, we are, uh, from the time we're born, uh, culture, family, church, school, uh, events, everything is, is making us domesticated, uh, to, to a way of thinking. And the only way to be truly happy and know who you are is to undomesticate yourself. Well, she takes it one step further and says to be undomesticated, a truly undomesticated person kills to feed the soul the same way, uh, most people kill the, to feed uh, the body, and that's why uh, she's uh, she, in in that short story you start. She's she's really upset that there's somebody hunting in her ground, that they're leaving these dead bodies around to be found. Uh, she's the number one detective in in that squad, and uh, 
this really upsets her that somebody would be so callous because no one will ever find her bodies. Okay. And, uh, and she goes on to say, you know, how all the profilers, uh, all their profiles are set on the people they caught and that they would never catch an undomesticated person because they're fully, truly undomesticated. They don't leave trophies. They don't set a pattern. They don't pick on a certain type of person, a young person, an older person. There's none of that. They just go out and feed their soul one day and decide to take this person out. And um, so so it's in kind of a u- unique philosophy. And so uh, I, th- I think you'd enjoy I think you'd enjoy the short story, but you'd probably really enjoy the book because it gets a lot of twists and turns. I like your two stories about the dogs. I, prefer, I like the title one that says, On the Road of Anne and the Bat. Yeah, yeah that's a true story. That's not fiction. That, <laughs> that actually happened. <laughs> Do- dogs, dogs are very curious you can tell a dog anything, and they'll get you into lots of trouble without even trying. Yeah, yeah. Well, she wasn't much help that day. She she was more interested in getting where we were going and getting something to eat. I mean, the bat wasn't. I'm thinking, you know, what the hell? You should be. Uh, this bat should be uh, getting you a little upset, like me. And she just got down on the table, kept her head down, and let me take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very unusual for her, but. I can tell you've got a great love for animals and a great sense of the story. Can you mention where people can go and find your website? Uh, yes, they can find me at www.garysmithauthor.com. And obviously and, uh, they can check out all your books on Amazon and all, all the various other yeah, book they're, sites. They're all, on the, they're all on the website with... with uh, with uh, direct links to Amazon, but they're they're also available uh, uh, anywhere you can download an ebook. They're also an Audible. Uh, on Audible, you can uh, download all the books. And uh, did you read your own books? Yeah, I. It's. <laughs> I do. I I laugh because by the time you've written the book. Right. And, and the way I write, like I said, I never know where it's going. At some point, about halfway through, I'll stop. I don't even remember what I was writing in the first chapters. And I'll go back and I'll, I'll do the first kind of uh, read of the draft. Just make sure it flows well and get a sense of it. But then by the time the wife will ask me, you know, how's the book? I, say, I have no clue what this book's about, you know, because I'm just focusing on the one chapter at a time and uh so at the end i i go through the first draft and proofreading and uh that's generally a, the first sign of whether i'm going to enjoy the book because when i find myself so engrossed in the story i'm not really doing the proofreading <laughs> i'm thinking wait a minute i got to go back because uh I, i'm too much into the story and so yeah i do reread them and some of them i've read uh, we've read twice or three times generally by the time of the f- time of the first or by the fifth proofreading and rewrites and i'm and, and pretty much tired of the book but then when this when the about two months rolls around and then and the book's out then i'll go through it again and read it and uh and live in, and enjoy them you know i uh uh, the collection of short stories I've gone through already maybe three times. I've read it three times. So, well, as I say, I, I think, as I say, the uh, thing about writing a book is my opinion is, and this is just my humble opinion, if you can get one person to, to read it and like it, that's something. I mean, obviously, as you said before, earning a living is a nice way of doing it, but I, not everyone is going to be able to earn a living out of being a writer. Yeah. Well, yeah, well I, I, uh, having said that about earning a living off of writing a novel or two or three or four, um, 
you've got to have some purpose to write. And uh, I write to tell my story. And and if I if I enjoy the book enough to read it twice after I've written it, I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah, if Netflix wants to buy the rights, they can do what they want with the we'll book. Keep, we'll, we'll put a little cry out there. If Netflix is know, listening, they, he won't. Just contact Gary. He won't mind. T- Any time. Yeah, he won't answer the phone. Pardon me? I, I said, I, I said, if Netflix want to come and contact you, you will answer the phone anytime. Yeah. You never know. I mean, it's... <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, at some level, I, at some point, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a goal in, in a sense of that it, it could happen or will happen. And, uh, and yeah, I, you know, they find me very easy to work with, I'll tell you that, because like I say, I, uh, it's not about being famous and it's not about making a ton of money. It's, it's not, it would just be great to see it, uh, given, uh, a life beyond uh, being, uh, a book. Uh, my satisfaction comes uh, holding it in my hand and rereading it and enjoying the book after six months and saying, "Yeah, I think I, I'm happy with it," and that's all that counts. And and I I, I think that's true of most artists that uh, whether they're painting or sculpture, you know, they got to be happy with it, and then uh, then they're then it's complete. So. Well, I'm going to download that with no remorse, and I would like to ask your permission, if possible, to read it on my podcast. I don't like doing anything without permission. Oh, sure, absolutely. I, I always like to ask first because it's your pro- it's your pride and joy, and you know, at the end of the day, I don't want no. you saying, "Oh, he never asked." That's it. Oh, uh, no, well, you know, my first book, I remember. Uh, it was out maybe six months, and I was scouring the internet, and I found I found it for free, download for free. <laughs> Somebody had uh, had uh, turned it into a PDF and put it on their on their site of free books, and you know, friends what? and family got upset, and I said, "For why? I it, I wrote it to be read, <laughs> so you know, it's." Uh, it's yeah no you absolutely if you want to post any of that up any of that it's feel free to thank you very much for that my friend i do appreciate that well i I don't know what else we can say gary because i think we've covered most of what you do and how you do it which is good (laughs) because that's why you come on the show in the first place yeah i was uh I was uh, I was a little curious about uh, uh, Ghost Man. How that come about? Oh, uh, it's a it is a real true story. Um, years ago, I was feeling ill. I um, I my wife had to call out the doctor, and I had a blood sugar of one two four. I was taken straight to the hospital ED ED to o, uh, ICU, put in a juice coma. And therefore, when I was in my juice coma, I was not here or in the next realm. So that's why I called myself Ghost Man. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Sparring story, isn't it? See, it's a true story. I mean, obviously, yeah. I had a near-death experience as well, but, I mean, it's up to people whether they believe that or not. So. <laughs> no, yeah, well, yeah, well, I, 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 I'm to a point that it's... Only thing important is what I believe. You know what I mean. And I exactly. Have knowledge exactly. I, I, I'm a great believer in everyone's allowed yeah. their opinion, as long as it yeah. doesn't make anybody yeah, else I have, angry. I have many opinions, but I have few beliefs, and I, I see a distinction between them. You know, my yeah. my opinion my opinions can change in a moment, especially political opinions. But uh, true beliefs like uh, like uh, come about. Like Ghostman come about, like sitting with my son come about. Those, I, those are a little harder to change, you know. Those are. Well, those I think I, I was fascinated by your sto- your story about your uh, son, and I think I can hear the connection still there. Have you ever just wanted to write a book on 
What would have happened if he was alive? Yeah, what what journey he would have had? I, I'm sorry if it. I don't mean yeah, to upset no, you. I, uh, I, you know, I, I've not I've not wondered that, and and I guess I've thought about it a lot, and it just seems to me as I've gotten older that my essence hasn't ever changed. I'm the same person I was from my first memory. The The only difference was that two and three, I was frustrated because I couldn't speak. I got a little older and I was frustrated because I was told when to go to bed and what I had to eat. And then a little older, I was frustrated. Uh, but the, my, my favorite colors, the things that, uh, dogs, uh, things that inspired me were always the same. It was always like I was trapped in this human form. And then at some point, uh, uh, I was allowed to drive. And, you know, in my 20s, you start a career and you, and you start to sense this real freedom to make decisions as you want. But the essence hasn't changed. And then now that I'm getting older, <laughs> uh, you start seeing you're going back to restraints you know for you, you certain foods you can't eat you're being told uh, you wake up in the morning and your knee tells you you're not going to run today <laughs> and, and oops Hi, welcome to your neighborhood pharmacy. Hi, I've got a prescription for diabetes test strips. How much is the copay? Well, it depends on your type of commercial insurance and factoring in your yearly spend, subtracting the deductibles, also depending on your monthly Ugh, allowance. Why can't there be a better option? Or you could try Contour Next test strips. A 35 counts only $19.99 over the counter and proven to be highly accurate. Go to contournext.com slash radio to see if over the counter strips are a more affordable option for you. Hmm, I think I'll try Contour Next.